Hi there, Rabbi Vatnik from Temple Aliyah here. We're at Gelson Supermarket in Calabasas. I'm going to take a tour of the grocery store to see what is kosher for Passover, what is not, what you need to have a special hexer for, and what you don't. So come on with me, we'll go on in and take a look. So sometimes you're really lucky. You show up and there's a section just like this, with all the food is kosher for Passover. But sometimes you'll go and you'll find food that doesn't have that special marking that says kosher for Passover. So we're going to take a look and see what you do when the food doesn't have that special marking. So the main prohibition on Passover is eating chametz, that's leavened bread. Anything where the flour was in contact with water for more than 18 minutes before it was baked. So some things, like matzah, you might think are always going to be kosher for Passover. But actually, you'll see at the top of this box, if you look really close, it actually says, not for Passover use. And that's going to be true with a lot of other foods that you think might actually be kosher for Passover. Some other things that actually have traces of chametz in it, we're going to take a look at them, but there'll be anything that's processed. A lot of processed foods will actually use derivatives of chametz in the processing process. So, well, let's walk you through and show you things where you want, really want to be careful, and the other places where it's safe, you don't have to worry about it. So first thing, fresh meat. As long as it's fresh or in large pieces, you never have to worry about it having a special marking for Passover. Only if it's frozen or cut up in tiny little pieces, that's when you might have to worry. Sometimes in that freezing process, they'll add little bits of flour or other grains just to keep the pieces from sticking together. But if you go with fresh meat, you're going to be good to go. So milk gets a little tricky. If you buy milk before Passover comes in, you are good to go no matter what. But if you buy milk during the week of Passover, once the holidays actually come in, then it has to have a special marking that says kosher for Passover. The reason is, when we bring in Passover, when we burn all the chametz that we find in our house, we say some words that nullifies any trace amounts of chametz that might be the food that we bought. But if you buy that food during the week, that last thing that we say doesn't cover any trace of chametz in that food. So we load up on milk and other dairy products before Passover enters, otherwise the week of, you're going to want to take a look for that. Uh, that marking is such kosher for Passover. So unlike milk, eggs do not need a special marking for Passover, whether you buy them before or after the holiday begins. Because as you can see, an egg is fully contained within its shell. There's never going to be any concern about traces of chametz getting mixed in. The one thing I will say though, is that it's always good to get the best eggs that you can. Free range is good, certified, humane, or pasture raised are even better because happy chickens will give you happier and healthier eggs. Now just like fresh meat, fresh fruits and vegetables never need a special marking for Passover. Actually, they never need a special marking at all that says that they're kosher, because they're fresh and come straight from the ground. You always want to make sure though that you wash them thoroughly, remove any insects or other pesticides that might have gotten on the vegetables. Now when it comes to dried fruit, you actually have to be careful and you want to make sure that you have that mark that says kosher for Passover. Because like other processed foods, it might actually have traces of chametz that have gone into it to keep the fruit from sticking to itself. Now when it comes to nuts, whole large pieces of nuts that haven't been processed are great. But if they're cut up into little pieces or if they've been overly processed, you want to be a little careful there and take a look for a kosher for Passover marking them. So what about the ingredients that you'll actually cook with? But when it comes to spices, you want them to be whole, non-ground spices. And because the grinding process, they'll often add derivatives of chametz to keep them from sticking to themselves. So whole spices like a whole peppercorn, that's the way you want to go. Now when it comes to salt, you want non-iodized salt. That, that process of adding the iodine often uses chametz derivatives. So a whole non-iodized salt is also the best choice. When it comes to sugar, any plain white sugar is great. It does not need a special kosher for Passover marking. But when it comes to brown sugar or baking sugar, uh, confectioner sugar, those sugars you want to make sure that it actually has a kosher for Passover marking on it because of the other additives that go into it. Now finally, quinoa. It's a big question. Can you have quinoa on Passover? And its answer is a resounding yes. Quinoa is not a grain, it's actually a berry. So it's a wonderful alternative to rice and other grains. But what about rice? So it turns out rice and beans 
and other things like that, corn as well, they actually fall in a category called kidney oat. Kidney oat, it's kind of like a grain, kind of not. So Ashkenazi rabbis will often prohibit them on Passover, but Sephardi rabbis say, not a problem whatsoever. Ashkenazi rabbis will say, though, that if you happen to be eating at a meal where there is kidney oat, not a problem, don't have to worry about that. And actually, some Ashkenazi rabbis will even permit the eating of kidney oat from the outset. So leave it up to your own family's traditions and your rabbi's answers. But things like uh, lentils and beans and rice may even be possible options too. But if you're looking for a great alternative to rice, especially when it comes to making sushi, because we know that fresh fish is good to go, quinoa is a great choice to go. So what about paper goods? Well, for the most part, paper plates, napkins, uh, utensils, they're all good to go, unless they say they have a starch coating on them. Sometimes they'll apply to keep them from sticking together. The one thing that you have to be careful of, though, are paper tablecloths. To keep them from sticking to themselves, they're almost always coated with some sort of starch, either in flour or corn-based. So you definitely want to make sure that any paper uh, tablecloths will have that coating for Passover on there. When it comes to the plates, you're going to be good to go. So when you want to wash down all that delicious matzah, you're going to want to know what you can drink. But when it comes to pure fruit juice, 100% pure fruit juice, anything you buy before Passover is good to go. You want to make sure that if you buy it during the week of Passover, it has a special marking that says kosher for Passover. Now when it comes to soda, well, regular you know, Coca-Cola and the likes like that, you definitely want to make sure that it has a kosher for Passover marking on it. Why? Well, for two reasons. One is the corn syrup. So if you hold that corn, being kidney oat, is okay to eat on Passover, then that's fine. But there's another issue with soda, which comes with the flavoring. The flavorings are actually added by using a process that involves a little bit of alcohol. And so there'll be traces of grain alcohol or traces of chametz in all sodas. So that's why you want to make sure you're careful there. And the same goes with just soda water. Plain soda water is good. All week long you can buy it without any problems. But if you get the flavored soda water, because of that flavoring will actually have trace of chametz, you definitely will need to have a market that says kosher for Passover, whether you buy it before or during the week of Passover. So when it comes to coffee and tea, you actually need to be a little careful. So when it comes to a whole coffee bean or whole tea leaves, then that is okay. You don't have to worry about having any special markings to say kosher for Passover. But where you have to be careful is when it comes to ground coffee, because ground coffee might have traces of kidney oats in it or traces of chametz. Um, flavored coffee might also have traces of chametz. The same goes with flavored tea. Now if the flavoring in tea comes from an actual leaf itself, then that's okay. But if it's additional flavors, that's where you need to be careful. Now the one thing I will add is that when you're buying coffee, again, try to go for something that's more fair trade or something that's even direct trade. That oftentimes, coffee will actually contribute to the exploitation of workers in the third world and it doesn't really match up with our Jewish values. All right, let's get down to business. Liquor, what do we do? But when it comes to wine, it has to say kosher for Passover. Because of the process, there might be traces of chametz. We want to make sure whether you buy it before or during the actual week of Passover, you want to make sure that it has that sign that says kosher for Passover. Now when it comes to alcohol, I know Slivovitz and the like is not necessarily the most delicious alcohol, but it almost always guaranteed that it says kosher for Passover. Now, a lot of us will think, well, potato vodka or tequila or possibly even rum might be okay because it's not made from normal grains, which technically can be true, but oftentimes you'll have traces of grain alcohol that's mixed in with those other alcohols. So if you are going to be on the search for potato vodka, or for tequila, or for rum, which all, by the way, when they're aged, can be excellent alternatives to whiskey, you just want to make sure that they actually have a marking that says kosher for Passover. And there you go. Thank you so much for joining me on this tour through the local Gelson supermarket. I hope this is able to take some of the stress out of your grocery shopping as you prepare for Passover. Remember, if you're ever looking for just a really simple selection, Go to the Kosher for Passover section. There's a lot of options. You never have to worry about remembering all these different rules. But if you have any more questions, please visit templealiyah.org slash Passover. We 
have a large selection of resources to help answer all of your passive questions. Until then, thank you so much. I'm Rabbi Gabriel Botnick from Temple Aliyah in Woodland Hills, California.